So this presentation is about finding probabilities underneath the normal distribution curve. Um, for example, uh, the probability that X falls between A and B in the illustration here is just that shaded area underneath the curve between A and B. So we need to be able to find areas. Uh, the integral calculus is the general method for finding all such areas. Um, but what we're going to look at today is some functions in Excel, some graphical functions on the internet uh, that you can use uh, to find the areas without having to do the calculations yourself. So since we don't have calculus available to us to calculate areas underneath the normal distribution curve, uh, we're going to look at some alternative methods. Um, in this presentation, I'm going to look at the online graphical applets, printed distribution tables, and Excel. Uh, the workbook also discusses um, how to use a TI-84 calculator and uh, also goes through this 68.95-99.7% rule, uh, which it's actually actually important to uh, understand that rule, uh, but I think I can illustrate it just as well in the workbook uh, without the PowerPoint. So here are three websites that have graphical applets uh, that I'll be demonstrating today. And uh, these uh, URLs are also in the workbook. This is uh, module 11, topic four. Um, and you'll find a little uh, write up, basically just the URLs uh, in the workbook. So this is an application to help you visualize areas underneath the normal distribution. Let's suppose that human temperatures are normally distributed with a mean of 98.4 degrees Fahrenheit and a standard deviation of 0 0.7 degrees Fahrenheit. And I want to find what's the probability that a randomly selected person will have a temperature below 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm just making up those numbers for the mean and standard deviation. They're sort of in the ballpark, but I'm, I'm sure they're not quite right. Anyhow, um, they just say enter, and the application will fill in the uh, probability for you, and it'll illustrate it with the pink area shown there. And so it's looking, looking like 61% of the population would have a temperature below 98.6 under these assumptions. So here's an applet um, that lets you find any one of these four numbers if you're given the other three. So let's think about uh, human temperatures. I've typed in that, I don't know if this is right, but the, I've typed in that the mean is 98.4 degrees Fahrenheit and the standard deviation is 0 0.7 degrees Fahrenheit. And if I want to find, so what's the probability that the temperature of a randomly selected person is less than 98.6? I would just type the 98.6 in here for the value of x, the value of the variable, and then I'll leave this one blank, and when I hit calculate, it'll fill in the missing number. So there, 61% of the people would have a temperature at or below 98.6 uh, with these assumptions about the mean and standard deviation. Okay, so but I can, I can do this leaving any one of the spaces blank. So let's say um, I don't know the standard deviation, but somehow I know that, uh, oh, let's say um, if 
50... 51% of the people so I need to type up 0 0.51 let's say I know that 51% of the people have a temperature below 98.6 and I think that the mean is 98.4 so the missing piece of information is the standard deviation and I can hit the calculate button and I, I get a number and it's not very realistic but uh, there you go that's what you would get um, so anyhow you have a homework problem involving some uh, cereal boxes where the given information will give you three of the numbers and you're missing the fourth. This applet would be a good way to solve that problem. Um, you can also do it algebraically. Um, I may demonstrate that, uh, but not right now. So this web page has calculators to perform a whole variety of different statistical functions. I'm just going to show you this interactive graph of the standard normal curve. Click on, on that link and oh, they have one to show a two-tailed area under the normal curve. I'll click to allow Adobe Flash to run and then here's the, comp the calculator. And uh, the thing I like about this one um, is it shows you two scales on the x-axis. So you know, this one's set up on the, on the bottom here. The, these numbers, the 100 and the 116 and the 132 and so forth, are x values in like natural units you would think of those as like pounds or degrees Fahrenheit or kilograms or whatever your units are so this distribution here is set up to have a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 16 and what you have up above is the z-scores like 116 pounds let's say that's 16 pounds more than the mean. And so if it's 16 pounds more than the mean, that's one standard deviation. Each, the standard deviation is 16 pounds. So two of those 16 pounds would be 32. So 132 is two standard deviations above the mean. So if the weight in pounds is 132, then the weight in STDs would be two. And you can type up here to let the mean and standard deviation be whatever you want. So I'll keep going back to this example with the temperatures. Maybe the mean human temperature is 98.4. Maybe the standard deviation is 0 0.7 degrees Fahrenheit. So now it sets up the scale, the mean, zero STDs is 98.4, one STD is 98.1 because the distance above the mean is 0 0.7 degrees Fahrenheit there. 0 0.7 degrees Fahrenheit is one standard deviation. Now the, the problem with this app is you can't just type in the X value and read off the exact area. All you can do is move your mouse and it, it draws for you. So the shaded area here is like 88.6%. And, uh, <coughs> well, you can't use this to make good calculations because you can never, 
you can never get the x value to point really exactly where you want it but it really helps you to visualize uh, what's going on with standardized units versus natural units. So on page 154 of your OLI textbook, uh, they talk about how to use these tables and they have a link to a table. Um, so the link is on page 154 and then it just pops up the table for you. Um, doesn't have a page number for the table itself. Um, anyway, it, this is a picture of the standard normal distribution. So when I say standard, that means that the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. A distribution of any shape, normal or with lots of different bumps and hills and valleys, any distribution can be standard so long as the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. This distribution is not just standard, it's also normal. That's this bell shape, a specific formula. So this is the standard normal distribution. And the capital Z is the standard normal random variable. If you want the probability that a z-score is below negative 3.34, you can look it up in the table. Here's your negative 3.3 right there. And then here's your the 4 to make negative 3.34. So you get the second row and the fifth column here and at their intersection in the second row the row for negative 3.3 and the column for 0.04 the numbers here in the middle of the table are the areas and so that shaded area would be 0 0.0004 so the z-scores are on the edges of the table and the left tail areas are in the middle of the table. So here's a rule you can use to make rough estimates. Um, about 68% of a normally distributed population is between negative one STD and positive one STD. So this middle part here has 68% of the area. But then if you go out to plus and minus two STDs, uh, then, then you get 95% of all the area between the plus and minus two STDs and 99.7% between plus and minus three STDs. So you can, you can look at this distance here, two standard deviations, and say, hey, 95% of a normally distributed population is not going to be more than that distance away from the mean. And the OLI textbook describes it on page 152. So here's the function in Excel for finding left tail areas. If I want all this shaded area to the left of A in the picture, the norm dist function will find that area for me. It is put in the A and then the mean and the standard deviation of the distribution followed by the word true. Now what true is for is it's it's finding the cumulative area up to A. The true means, yes, you want the cumulative area. If you said false, it would only tell you just the height of the curve right at A. But we're never going to really have any reason to want that. Uh, so you just have to remember to type in true. And uh, just to, as a reminder, like if the mean was zero and the standard deviation was one, 
then you would be dealing with the standard normal distribution. Okay. So in the last slide, we saw that the norm dist function can give you the area to the left of a given point A. If you want to find the area to the right of that given point instead of the left, what you do is you say, well, the, now the shaded part to the right of A is just what's left from the total after you take away the part to the left. So the total area is one or 100%. So you do one minus and you use norm dist to get the area to the left. So one minus norm dist gives you what's left over, and that's the area to the right of A. And finally, to get the area between two points, A and B. So notation here is P is the probability, and then you see how I have in parentheses A less than X less than B. So the probability that A is less than X is less than B. How do I find that area shaded between A and B? Well, what I'm going to do in Excel is I'll, use, I'll get the total area to the left of B, and that includes all this, all this left tail part that you don't want. But I get all the area to the left of B, and then I subtract away uh, the area to the left of A. And what's left is just the part that's in between.